Hi, I'm Chris Potts. This lecture is part of our unit on building effective distributed word representations for semantics. The focus of this lecture is on dimensionality reduction, that is, taking big matrices and making them more compact and powerful. Broadly speaking, the goal of dimensionality reduction is to eliminate rows or columns in your matrix that are highly correlated, while also bringing similar things together and pushing dissimilar things apart. In this lecture, we'll study latent semantic analysis, or LSA, which is a prominent, easy-to-use, widely implemented method of dimensionality reduction. It not only provides a reduced size matrix, but also captures similarities that come not just from direct co-occurrence, but also from second-order co-occurrence. To start, let me try to give you a sense for what I mean by the phrase second-order co-occurrence. Uh, here's a two-dimensional vector space with four points, A, B, C, and D. And in this space, B and D are close together, and B and C are far apart, comparatively. Suppose now we fit a linear regression line to this data. This is given as the orange line here. This line captures the primary source of variation in the data. We can think of it as providing an approximate one-dimensional version of the original two-dimensional data set in that, intuitively, it maps each one of these existing points to a new point on the line. In performing this dimensionality reduction, mapping the points to this line, we change the space in an important way. For instance, B and C are now very close together in the new space, whereas B and D in the new space are relatively far apart. To extend these intuitions to three dimensions, imagine that you're at the top of a skyscraper and your friend is on the ground at its base. In the three-dimensional world, the two of you are far apart. However, if we compressed the three dimensions to two by compressing the skyscraper down so that it was flat, then you and your friend would be right next to each other. Dimensionality reduction achieves this kind of compression and simplification in arbitrarily high dimensions, enabling us to pull together points that look dissimilar in the original high-dimensional space. Latent semantic analysis, or LSA, is based in singular value decomposition, which says for any matrix of real numbers, uh, A, of dimension m by n, there exists a factorization of A into matrices T, S, and D. It's important, uh, just starting out, to keep track of the dimensionality of these objects. Here's an abstract picture of how the breakdown occurs. Uh, in the singular value matrix here, the blank values correspond to zeros. The matrices T and D are what's called orthonormal, that is, their columns are length normalized, and orthogonal to one another, that is, they each have cosine distance of one from each other. The singular value matrix S is a diagonal matrix arranged by size so that the first dimension corresponds to the greatest source of variability in the data, followed by the second and then the third. The algorithm for finding this factorization uses some tools from matrix algebra that we won't cover here, but I think the intuitions are clear enough. LSA is often called truncated SVD. We don't, of course, want to simply rebuild the original matrix as we've done here. Rather, we want to just consider the product of S and T, or the product of just S and the transpose of D, and we typically do it only with some initial slice of these two. That's the truncation step. For example, if we want to truncate to two dimensions, taking a row-wise perspective, then we multiply this submatrix here by these two singular values. This results in a 3 by 2 matrix in this case. Here's an example of LSA in action on a toy problem. First, the guiding intuition. Gnarly and wicked are both positive slang terms. But at least stereotypically, gnarly is associated with California speech, and wicked is associated with Bostonian speech. I think the sharpness of this dialect distinction has dulled over the years, but you get the idea. As a result of this hypothesized dialect split, Gnarly and Wicked are unlikely to co-occur in the same document. However, they're likely to occur with similar terms, that is, other positive terms, that aren't dialect-specific. 
Uh, this toy matrix here reflects these intuitions in that neither of the terms gnarly or wicked occurs with the other, but both co-occur with awesome, and neither of them co-occurs with lame or terrible. Unfortunately, if we measure distance in this basic space, wicked and gnarly appear to be dissimilar in virtue of never occurring together. So here we have gnarly, and all the way down here we have wicked. And I can say that first reweighting this uh, matrix using pointwise mutual information or TFIDF or one of those other similar reweighting algorithms doesn't help solve this uh, fundamental problem. At this stage, we can apply SVD to the original matrix, and we're going to pull out just the first two dimensions, as this shading indicates, taking a row-wise perspective and looking at the product of T and S. Taking that product gives us this new matrix here, which is 5 by 2. In this new space, as you can see over here in this distance table, gnarly and wicked are close together, and both of them are close to awesome, and then terrible and lame are distant from all of them. So we solved the original problem that we were aiming to solve. In the previous example, we truncated to two dimensions, in real vector space, you might want to pick a much larger dimensionality k. And you can sometimes do this heuristically by plotting the singular values in the matrix S and seeing whether there's a clear point where the drop-off occurs and then taking only dimensions above that point. So in the ideal case, you end up with a bar plot that looks something like this and that at a certain point, you get a real drop-off. And then you can say that you'll take just dimensions at this k or above for your reduced dimensional perspective. Uh, here I've applied LSA to a word-by-word -word matrix that was first reweighted with pointwise mutual information. The PMI weighting uh, is given here on the left. Uh, PMI makes the distribution of counts in the underlying matrix more normal, which should make SVD more reliable. So here on the left, we have the distribution of PMI values, and on the right is the distribution of uh, values after we apply LSA to that PMI matrix. Here are some comparisons of the values against the underlying raw cell co-occurrence counts. So those counts are given here uh, as x-axis values, and in this case, the y-axis is just PMI. And in this case, the y-axis is PMI, followed by an LSA step reduced to dimensionality 100. These two distributions look a lot alike, except that the LSA values are more evenly distributed across the y-axis, particularly at the low end of the values. And finally, here's a comparison against the overall word frequencies, that is the sum of all the values in each row in the underlying matrix. Those values are given on the x-axis here. And then in, the, in this case, again, on the right, we have the y-axis giving raw PMI values, and the y-axis over here giving PMI values, followed by the LSA step, again, at dimensionality 100. And again, the shape of these two is similar, but the LSA, LSA reweighting creates a more even distribution of values at the low end here. To close, let me just list uh, uh, some other prominent dimensionality reduction techniques. First, principal components analysis, or PCA, is very similar to LSA in its underlying mechanisms and its logic. Probabilistic LSA is closely related to latent Dirichlet allocation, which is normally thought of as a topic modeling algorithm, but which can also be seen as reducing the dimensionality of a vector space. T-distributed stochastic neighbor embedding, or to SNE, is a dimensionality reduction technique that we'll make regular use of in this unit. It is especially geared toward visualizing high-dimensional spaces in two dimensions. And finally, word to vec and GLOVE can be thought of as methods for simultaneously reweighting a count matrix and performing dimensionality reduction. We'll look at GLOVE in detail in the code lab, and we'll make connections with word to vec in the exercises for this unit. Finally, for references on these and other methods, I suggest checking out page 160 of Turney and Pentel's 2010 article, From Frequency to Meaning.